Thank you to everyone here for joining us for our presentation today that we've called uh, Being Part of It. My name's uh, Jackie Hayes and I'm Hannah's mum. And um, when, I, when Jan first invited us here to present at the conference, I um, asked Hannah if she would be interested and if she would like to come along and do the presentation. It's after all, it's her story. And um, she said, yes, yeah, she would really like to do that. And I explained that it was going to be in Canberra. And she said, wow, Canberra, does that mean I need to learn to speak another language? <laughs> and I said, no, I think we'll be all right. Um, with, they speak English, um, and they'll be able to understand us. So I hope that um, we do speak in a language that you can understand. Uh, we're not standing up here as experts, but we are experts in Hannah's life. And um, we hope that you won't find anything exceptional in this presentation. It's a very ordinary life. Um, and we're talking about Hannah's valued roles, um, being part of um, community, and what is important to her, which is just being part of it. So I have to click, sorry. There we go, Hannah. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah. I'm 13 years old and I live in Adelaide. Thank you for inviting me to listen to my story. I am excited to be here. My family. One of my most important things in my life is my family. I have a, a mum and a dad and a brother called Matthew and a sister called Charlotte. I am the oldest and the coolest. <laughs> so from the beginning, um, I suppose I didn't really think of it as a vision. You don't really think about vision when your, your child is born. Um, but from the very beginning, I thought about um, uh, the things that I, I wanted to do with my, with my new baby. And um, I really looked at what was local to the community. I didn't want to travel too far. I didn't want to, um, to, to, to go, go great distances. So I looked locally at what, what I could do and what Hannah and I could do together. And so one of the first things was that I sought out some peer support through um, Down Syndrome SA and what they call the whole sort of early intervention program. But beyond that, I just looked at sort of mainstream support. So Hannah went to the local childcare, uh, she went to her local kindy. Um, I joined up with the, the mums and bubs group along with um, 10 other uh, mums who had just had their newborn babies. And um, I always wanted to take my, my new baby swimming, so we si signed up for the, for the local swimming class. And um, I just assumed that we, Hannah, they could do it. And unless someone said no, we just went ahead and, and, and went along. Um, and if somebody did say no, then we had to have a, a very good reason why not. And I, I didn't really accept no very often. Oh, sorry, Han. Hi. <laughs> Whoa, why, mommy? <laughs> nice school. Nice school. We all go to the same school together. I'm a year seven. This year I'm off to high school. I love being a student. I love going to school camps and excursions. At school, I'm in a leadership group. I'm a good leader because I'm honest. So when we were looking at schools for Hannah, um, again I just looked locally um, at what schools were available and I basically went in uh, with Hannah, took Hannah with me, and we both looked at the schools and spoke to the principals and some of the teachers. And essentially um, it was um, all around gut feel. You know when you're welcome, you know when someone wants you to be there, and if they don't, well, um, we, we, we decided to go with a school that um, welcomed us and welcomed Hannah and thought that it was, would be really, really great to have Hannah at the school. When, um, so Hannah started when she was five um, into reception and um, I was very clear about setting the boundaries early. So what I call is what was my teacher training, if you like. Um, so this is, um, Hannah's my oldest child, so it's the first time that I've navigated the education system. Um, but I was very clear um, from the beginning about um, 
saying to the school, how can we help you to support Hannah? So they were really good in terms of professional development of their teachers. They um, immediately enrolled their teachers into um, professional development classes about, around teaching um, a child such as Hannah. But um, I wanted um, to talk to them about roles and, and Hannah being included and part of it. And so for an example, um, one of the first things that we talked about was um, excursions. And Hannah's just said to you that she really, really loves excursions. She wants to be part of an excursion. Of course, she does. Every child does. Um, and so uh, at the beginning, the um, principal um, sort of said to me, oh, you know, we've got this excursion coming up, um, Jackie. If um, Hannah doesn't like it or she's not cooperating or, you know, she's having a bad day, we'll just ring you and you can come and pick her up. And I said, no, no, that's not happening. So very early on, I, I said, that will not happen. Okay, will you, would you do that with any other child? No, so we're not going to do it with Hannah. But what we will do is work very closely with you about what supports can go in place so that Hannah enjoys and can be part of every excursion and you don't need to ring us and ask us to pick her up. And so they were like, oh, OK, all right, that sounds like a good idea. And that's what we've done um, throughout <laughs> Hannah's um, school life, is whenever there's an excursion or a camp coming, coming up, they've basically sort of just checked in and said, you know, what are, these are the kind of things that we're going to be doing on this excursion. You know, what, what are going to be some of the possible challenges? And what, we can, what can we do to support that? And that's been so great. And so they've never rung. They've never rung us. And, and, that's, and so that's how it should be. So that was my starting um, in terms of um, trying to just set those boundaries very early about um, Hannah being including and part of it. So here are some of the um, excursions uh, that Hannah's been on with her leadership group and uh, some of her friends at school um, and on her, her school camp. Um, so then we talked about valued roles, and again, we didn't really um, call them valued roles. Um, valued roles was something that I, I've only just sort of um, learned about in terms of the theory and about you know, what John was um, talking about earlier. But we just sort of um, looked at it as saying, um, you know, how can Hannah um, be part of it, and wh what can she do? What are her strengths? What is she really good at? What does she enjoy? And how can we include that in some of what the school was doing? Uh, so some of the roles, Hannah, that you're going to talk about in terms of um, at school. No, um, we were having buddy at school. I like being a buddy because I, I have visual first um, and you can see the future of that, of that school. I was a year six SLC and the leader. I am a former, I love, I have a role of welcoming the people to our school. I just, it's just a nice thing to do. I like kindness and it's good. And so these are some, um, uh, photos of um, a uh, morning tea fundraiser that the school had and so Hannah was um, had the role of welcoming people to the morning tea and um, she also helped with um, preparing and cooking some of the cupcakes that they sell they sold at the morning tea and so she's working there um, to create those cupcakes did a great job I was half captain for Queen King this year. This is this was a compliment because I was voted in people voted for me. This made me feel awesome. <laughs> And so um, there were uh, two house captains um, for each of the teams, the green team, the red team, and the blue team. It's not blue. What blue colour is it? It was yellow. Yellow, yeah. sorry. <laughs> And um, so this was a fantastic thing that her peer group, um, her year seven peer group, voted Hannah in as the, as the girl house captain for the green team. And so this is them. Uh, um, and so actually her brother, Matthew, was voted in as the boy house captain. Um, he's in year six, and they're actually in the same class at school. 
Um, and so they, um, so that was just complete coincidence. And so they prepared some banners. And um, this photograph down here in the left-hand corner is Hannah um, out at the front leading the um, green team in their house chant, which was very exciting. So one of the um, main uh, roles that um, Hannah has is as a, as a drama student, and she has been part of um, Prospect Theatre for young people uh, since she was five years old. And um, we've spoken about, um, you know, uh, recognising those allies in your life, you know, those people that kind of get it and, and who are, who are going to have Hannah... Um, have Hannah's best interests um, and so it just so happened that we um, when I uh, uh, a book club was formed and one of the members of the book club was Margaret who is a um, drama teacher and she was just setting up a new drama workshop called Prospect Theatre for Young People and um, she said it would be perfect for Hannah and I thought excellent so Hannah um, has been a part of that group from from its very beginning and, and as you can see, just being part of that group, um, it's a mainstream, it's a local community um, drama group. Um, there's no drama with Hannah being, being there. Um, she just gets on with it and um, has enjoyed it for, for so many years. Um, and out of that came, became a very exciting thing that um, Hannah, someone else suggested that Hannah audition for a part in a documentary that was being made um, called A Field Guide to Being a 12-Year-Old Girl. And so last year, when she was 12, uh, sh she auditioned. So I, um, on my mobile phone, um, they sent uh, through a series of questions. And I asked Hannah the questions just off the cuff, no preparation. And I filmed it. And um, with, obviously, Hannah's consent, I, I sent that in. And she got selected to be one of the 12, 12-year-old girls. And it was very, very exciting. So it was... Um, shown at the Adelaide Film Festival and also the Berlin Film Festival um, and as you can see it features 12 girls talking about what it was like to be 12 years old and this is Hannah at the <laughs> at the film premiere um, where we got a pink limo and she um, obviously loved it so much so that was a very exciting moment hopes and dreams Okay. I was too still to live in Adelaide when, when, when I was 20. When I grew up, I wanted to be an actress, make plays and movies, and stuff like that. I wanted to travel to the moon and go around the world like America and Canada. Once it comes to me, now I'm forever in my family. Having my friends um, and um, oh my and neighbors and neighbors because I I will always stay close to where I came from. I really I really excited about my future. Just living a good life. I I have lots of hopes and dreams. Future. Sometimes I'm scared about the future because you don't know what's going to happen next, like a job. The NDIS, hmm, dare I mention it. Um, <laughs> so we self-manage Hannah's plan under the NDIS and she's actually on her second plan. And um, the first plan was fantastic and really well funded. And then the second plan, they decided to cut the funding by 50%. And so we had, for this year, we had $12,000. So um, part of the plan, um, so in, in um, formulating the second plan, and Hannah was part of the plan conversation. So when her first plan was um, done in conversation with Hannah and setting some of the goals. And so in the plan, we talked about um, being part of community, some valued roles, and also making and maintaining friendships. So one of her goals is making and maintaining friendships. And um, because we self-managed and because they didn't give us much money, we decided to fund um, Hannah's circle. So Hannah has um, a circle of support. 
um, which um, has been instrumental in um, Hannah learning about um, friendship and how to be a, a, a good friend. And so one of her roles that she has is, that is really important to her is um, being a friend. Um, and obviously not just with the circle, but you know, with, with all of her friends. Um, so here we've got some uh, photos of Hannah with um, three, of the, three of the students from the um, circle. And um, Hannah's circle is so Hannah's circle is essentially funded through the NDIS in that we have a facilitator. So of course um, Hannah doesn't want mum hanging around anymore. She's 13. So um, but she doesn't mind the facilitator who's really cool. Um, and her name is Sarah, and she's just a, a young woman who, um, she doesn't actually have any children of her own, but she's really, really enthusiastic about um, uh, Hannah creating roles and just doing fun things, you know, just enjoying stuff. So um, we've um, had the circle actually in place since Hannah started school. So it used to be funded in South Australia through the education department, which was a really wonderful thing. But with the NDIS, they decided that it was something that would be funded through the NDIS, so they no longer fund it. And unfortunately, the NDIS isn't too keen on funding them either. But we have had it in Hannah's plan for the last two years, and so we continue to have the circle. The really great thing about the circle is that Hannah chose the friends who are in the circle. So it wasn't a case of me deciding who's going to be in the circle. Hannah, we sat down with Hannah, and she chose the um, friends that she wanted to be in the circle. So this is all around, you know, that intentionality, um, just putting in a bit more uh, intentionality around friendships that, than perhaps you would do otherwise. Um, so the circle has essentially um, uh, four, is it Hannah now? Four, four or five people in the circle who have es essentially been in there since Hannah was in reception. They've, they've grown up with her and they've stayed at school. A couple have now gone on to high school. Do you want to talk a little bit about the circle, Hannah? Yes. We uh, love to build a bunch of old friends that I like to hang out with. They stick by me. They don't let me down. They are friends that help me through challenges and fears. And this is um, Sarah. And what are you going to say about Sarah, Hannah? Sorry, this is unscripted. Um... I guess she's a girl that helps me, that really encourages me to be the girl I am today. Awesome. Yeah, so that's um, Sarah. So, um, so, she, so basically her job is funded through NDIS plans. Yeah. Um, and so this was Hannah's uh, circle sleepover. So this was the first sleepover that Hannah's had, which was very exciting. Um, and so she invited her circle friends over for a sleepover um, and they had an awesome time doing karaoke and swimming. Some challenges. <laughs> now, Hannah and I spoke about challenges, didn't we, Hannah? And she didn't really want me to talk about them because she said that's a bit embarrassing, Mum, talking about challenges in front of a room full of strangers. So, um, so we said we might mention just a couple. Um, so one of the things about the circle was that when Hannah first started the circle, she then decided that she didn't just want a circle of friends, she also wanted a square of friends and a triangle of friends. And what she thought she might be able to do is just kind of pick and choose who was in, a, in, a, who was in and who was out. You know. So we had to really um, talk with Hannah, um, or the facilitator really talked with Hannah about um, what friendship means, you know, that loyalty, um, that uh, negotiating conflict, that negotiating um, compromise when things aren't always your way. And you couldn't just have people in a circle and the next day throw them out of the circle because that hurts people's feelings. So we did talk about that, and that's been a really good um, way of Hannah learning about um, relationships and friendships. Um, some of the other challenges are... Um, around um, age appropriateness. So Hannah is 13. She wants to be treated at, like a 13-year-old. So she wants to be doing all those things that a typical teenager uh, wants to do. Um, and so um, I don't think that I'm necessarily a worry bug, but I do worry. <laughs> and so Hannah says to me, I don't worry, Mum. I can, I can look after myself. 
I'm now a teenager. You can trust me. You can trust me. You can trust me. So um, sometimes you'll find um, that other people um, treat Hannah like a baby and um, or much younger than she is and don't um, treat her in a way that is you know age appropriate. So we've been very and Hannah's very clear about it. If you she doesn't like it if you if you treat her like a baby. Of course, uh, she's standing up here doing this presentation. So, um, so we we talk a lot about mum not worrying, mum stepping back, and just being letting Hannah do what she wants to do, um, and hang out with her friends. Um, the other things that we've um, talked about, well, we might talk about that in the tips, but um, sometimes. Um, Hannah bangs her head, or she's always banged her head since she was very little. And sometimes we just don't want to brush her hair because she doesn't like having her hair brushed. So we have a few issues um, around that, some challenges, don't we, Hannah? So we talk about how important it is for her to look um, good at school and, and, and good when she goes out to meet her, meet her friends. You can come and talk to me about any other challenges if you want to at a later time, but, but we'll leave it there. Hannah's tips. Um, Hannah, do you want to give some tips? Don't give up on your dreams. Encourage others to support activities that may be me. So one of the things that we've done at school, um, in conjunction with the school, and again, this is a very um, easy example and simple example around managing Hannah's hair. Um, and so they set up this beautiful um, uh, mirror and sort of thing for her so that she can do that when she, when she gets to school because um, she doesn't want mum or dad to do it. So some light bulb moments, Hannah. Um, can, can I say something that isn't like yeah go, that go. isn't scripted yes okay so first of all um the school is going to about 74 they're playing a bunch of games drinking hot milk and then eating cookies and one that's um scripted is that moment in the picture that i'm in that's also a lovely moment yeah she loves that moment that so that's hannah's um yeah, standing in the sea at munta um, so, a couple of things. Um, so, when, I, um, when Hannah was born, I, um, I had this moment where I was thinking, oh, you know, I almost felt sorry for her because I thought, oh, she won't, she won't have the same life that I've lived. She wouldn't have a life like I have. And then I stopped and I thought, wow, Jackie, you know, um, if you're starting to think like that, what, how, what, how can you expect others to see the potential in Hannah? So I gave myself a good talking to, and um, very early on I said, I will never think like that again. And so for every um, chance and every opportunity, um, we seize it so that Hannah, with her choice, and it's <coughs> Hannah driving this, that she, she wants to do. Um, I did slightly become a stage mum during Field Guide to being a 12-year-old, but otherwise I'm, I'm stepping back. A um, couple of light bulb moments for me. So one was um, early on when we had an OT working with Hannah, and we were talking about what she was, what she was doing, and she said, oh, I think we should get Hannah to talk about um, today, tomorrow, and yesterday. And I said, oh, wow, you know, they're quite um, complex uh, concepts. Do you think she's ready for it? And the OT said, the last thing we want to do is underestimate Hannah. And that stayed with me the whole time, because I thought, yes, we don't want to ever underestimate her. Uh, when we um, chose the school that Hannah is at, um, we met with the school principal, and the school principal said to us, it will be a privilege for Hannah to come to this school, and the kids will learn as much from Hannah as she will learn from them. And that's what you want to hear. You know, those are golden moments. Um, mentioned about the art of asking. Um, so I call this um, locking onto any throwaway remark. So, um, and this is not like being desperate and needy, but if somebody says and, and has a throwaway remark like, oh, you must bring Hannah around for a play date, or you should come and join, whatever it is, you lock onto it and you do it, and you get their number right away, and you don't let the opportunity go. And that asking is, is really difficult. It is um, something that you have to practice and, and make yourself do sometimes. Um, and, but it's really important. You know good people come into your life. 
seize them and use them, you know, because they, they want to be part of it and, and, and that's a really wonderful um, resource almost. Um, so locking on to the throwaway remark is, is, is really good. And one of those things that we do is we, we go down to a local restaurant and we've been going for, for quite a few times. Um, it's faster pasta, it's good because the service is really fast and it's cheap and Hannah, we've been going there for a long time and Hannah's really well known um, at the faster pasta and loves it. Um, we know everybody by name, they know um, me and my children by name, and, and they said, you know, Hannah, if you ever want a job here, you know, when, when you get to 16 and you're looking for a job, we'll, we'll give you a job. So she want, she'd like to be a maitre d' or, you know, that, that greeting, uh, holding the door open, people coming in and doing a bit of waitressing. So I'm going to be there, and we're going to be there, and Hannah, Hannah, if she wants to, she can go and... and Follow up that, you know, so just locking in those moments of, yes, people have, have offered stuff, so, so take them up on it. Um, the other thing, I suppose, is um, being part of and, and being in your community. So Hannah, um, we have two other children, so Hannah often goes along to watch her, her brother play at the footy club. So people, again, are, are seeing Hannah, know Hannah, she's part of the community, she's, she's that older sister, um, and um, she, she's familiar with the people that are involved with um, the rest of the family. Thank you so much for listening to us today. Um, this is our first presentation, so we were extremely nervous, but we've, <laughs> we've got through it. Mm -hmm.